afternoon. My name is Juanita Dawson, and I serve as an executive council member for AARP California. Welcome to everyone who's joining us live. Today, we are here with special guest, Jan Batiste Atkins. She's a professor, lecturer, and author of three books, African Americans of San Francisco, African Americans of uh, Monterey County, and most recent, African Americans of San Jose and Santa Clara County, published by Arcadia Publishing Company in the Images of America series. We encourage you to share this stream now on your own social media page so interested friends and family may also participate in today's conversation. Also, please feel free to ask questions you may have for Professor Atkins in the comment box. We will have a few minutes afterwards to be able to answer questions. AARP is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that works nationally with members, 38 million members, and 3.3 million members statewide to enhance the quality of life for all people as we age. As you know, February is Black History Month, and throughout Black History Month and beyond, we celebrate Black joy, our beauty, brilliance, variety, tenacity, resilience, and our ability to thrive despite everything. To that end, AARP is thrilled to have Professor Jan Batiste Atkins, author of African Americans of San Jose and Santa Clara County, here with us today to learn more about the Black experience in the Bay Area. As <clears throat> in the Bay Area, as well as Professor Atkins' work and what brings her joy. Welcome, Professor Atkins. I do have your book right here with me. It is very informative and historical view of the Santa Clara Valley. And I do have, as you see, a few sticky notes here in the book that I know you will be covering during our talk today. So let's go ahead and get started. Thank you very much. Professor Atkins, okay, first tell us how'd you get started with this research and writing your books? Well, as an educator here in the Valley over the last 20 years, I, um, I taught elementary school, middle school, and high school. And my high school students would often ask me, well, what, what were black people like during the, during the days of the early pioneers? Where did they live? What did they do? And I didn't have answers. And I told my students, I said, well, you know what? You need to go and research this and find out and then come back and share with us what you what you found. And my students one day looked at me and said, well, why don't you go and get some more information so you can share with us? And I thought, oh, and I didn't have an answer for the kids. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna say? But then I said, you know what, that's a good point. And during that time I was working on my master's thesis and I was reading the old black newspapers of California. And I, and I was reading the poetry and short stories and literature and sharing that with my students. And I thought, you know what, that's a good question. What was the community like back in during the days of the pioneers, back in the 1840s, 1850s? And so I, I, that's what started me on this quest. This was about maybe 12 or 14 years ago. And, I, and, I, and I've been researching ever since. And as I learned new things, I wrote another book and learned new things and write another book. And I'm very excited because my books now are used in the elementary schools, high schools, middle schools, and college levels all over the country. Uh, so I'm just really grateful that I have a chance to uh, take, that I have the time as a partially retired person, <laughs> I have the time to research uh, the local history and share the local history with, with my students all over the city. Oh, thank you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the book, African Americans of San Jose and Santa Clara County, and when did people of African ancestry first arrive in the region before it was known as Silicon Valley, and what was life like for those pioneers? 
Well, my book uh, includes six chapters, African Americans of San Jose, Santa Clara County. The first chapter deals with life for uh, black pioneers during the early years. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then the second chapter, establishing community throughout the, through the African American church. And then chapter three addresses um, 20th century African Americans and community building. And then chapter four, the Good Brothers, Educational Opportunities and Black Student Athletes. Um, that's 18, 1950 to 1968. And then post-war boom and, and opportunities for African Americans. This is from 1950s to the 1990s. That primarily deals with technology and the technology boom. And then chapter six, the Black community creating opportunities and opening doors. And that's from 1970 to present. So. Um, what I the the book attempts to try to give a snapshot of the black of the evolution of the black community from beginning to present time. So um, so you you ask the question uh, where did when did people first arrive where did they come from? So you know what this is this was the most one of the most exciting parts of my research. So it was like a great find. <laughs> <laughs> and what I found out was that people of African heritage started coming to California uh, in the 1700s, in the 1760s as explorers. I was so shocked to, to find that out. And then, and then there was a community, that, a town that was established. And, and the town itself was established and people of African heritage came and helped to establish this town. And that was so exciting for me to find out the El Pueblo de San Jose de Guadalupe was established uh, by 68 people who worked in this particular uh, Pueblo, which is called the local town. And of those 68 people, uh, 15 of them were people of African heritage. And they were classified by the Spaniards as mulatto mulattas. And so what you see on the screen is the, the Pueblo itself. This is a map of the, the farmlands and the division, how the lands were divided and which families worked on the farmlands. And in the little squares, you'll actually see the names of the families. Well, you will also find along with this chart, and I saw this down at uh, uh, San Pedro Square here in San Jose, it indicates the ethnicity of those families. And so it's, it shows mulatto, mulatta, next to each of those uh, families who participated, who were the early settlers of the early citizens. They were called Pab Pabladores. And these were the early citizens in this first civil agricultural settlement. And these people farmed the land. And what their job was, was to, was to farm, was to grow the vegetables for um, the Mission Santa Clara, for the Pr Presidio, up in San Francisco and for the Presidio down in, in Monterey. And so they they were, this was where they grew the land, grew the, the, the food rather on the land right here, uh, east of the Guadalupe River, right um, near, um, so it's right in San Jose on the east side of the Guadalupe River. Oh, wow, thank you. That is so interesting. Uh, the book also documents the establishment of African-American communities in the region through churches and social groups. And you discuss details throughout the book, in particular in chapter two, where you take a deep dive in establishing community through the African-American church. Can you tell us a little bit more about the African-American community in San Jose and any stories of resilience you encountered while conducting this research? Well, yes. So uh, in the African-American community, uh, both free men and women live side by side. Well, uh, free men and women and also enslaved people were in this Santa Clara Valley area. And so these, uh, for instance, on the screen, you'll see the first picture of James Williams. Well, James Williams was a miner who was able to buy his freedom uh, after panning for gold. And he moved to, to uh, San Jose and he worked at Murphy's Ranch. And this was in the 1850s. And so he was one person who came to the valley. Along with that were some enslaved people who sought their freedom here. They were able, either one, they were fugitives or else they were enslaved at the time and they were able to, through the local uh, abolitionist movements, they were able to uh, go to court. The, 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 it was, there was an organization called uh, the Afro League and they went to court 
and then they were able to get seek the freedom for the enslaved person. And the person was often freed. We have evidence uh, through History San Jose of, of emancipation papers, uh, ma I'm sorry, manumission papers that were granted by the court that freed the slaves right here in San Jose. Well, San Jose wasn't going to have slavery. <laughs> uh, so, um, so this happened. And then we also had people that, that worked in domestics and lab farm laborers in, as porters. And, and they lived and worked here in San Jose. Well, these people came together and then they created uh, the first churches. So we had the church that was created uh, by uh, William Cassie and he created, and, and William Cassie also created the first schools. We had St. Philip's Mission School that provided education for uh, the Native American uh, Indians, as well as Mexicans, Asians, Blacks could not go to, these uh, people of, of those descents could not go to public schools. So what happened is that they went to St. Philip's Mission School and the Mission School then was, was a location where kids could, where families could send their kids and they can get an education. In addition to that, William Cassie established what is called the Fixonian Academy. And this was a high school for uh, the older kids. So this community was established. The churches were established. The first church, um, which was um, a first Amy Zion Church, which was, a, which was in the picture of the churches. Uh, so that particular church is still in our community today. It was established in 1852. Then the second church was Antioch, Antioch Baptist Church, and that was established in about 1890s. And then we had a third church that was established in Palo Alto, and this was established in the, at around the turn of the century, 1904, 1905. So through the development of the, of the local churches and local schools, the communities then began to evolve. And out of the community came barber shops, and out of the community came um, farms. So many black people of African heritage came to this area seeking a safe place to live. They heard the call, go west, young men, go west. Well, they heard that call too and decided to go west and to establish their families and their communities. So we had a thriving community um, here in Santa Clara County. In my other book, San Francisco's community was thriving uh, also with some of the similar kinds of developments as well as down in Monterey. Great, my goodness, that is so exciting. And I also found chapter six in the book, Fascinating. Now this chapter is entitled, The Black Community, Creating Opportunities and Opening Doors, which describes some captivating stories about the contributions of African-Americans. So can you tell us a little bit more about this section of the book and what inspired you to really write about that? Well, I end the book with the black community creating opportunities and opening doors. So the first part, the first five chapters, really the first chapter deals with the establishment of the community. Then the middle chapters deal with after, before World War um, II and after World War II. And the, it deals with how the communities uh, grew through technology, through in, employment opportunities, through, through jobs and um, so, so the community grew, uh, and, and by the 1970s, the community started making opportunities for others. And so that's why I named this one creating opportunities and opening doors. So those opportunities were, uh, were provided by those in the job. So many of these people were in technology and they began to open doors through, uh, of um, employment uh, groups and organizations through community groups and organizations, and they made it possible for others to also uh, uh, obtain jobs in the in the in the valley. And this is consistent throughout uh, all of the San Francisco community and the Monterey community. It's like Black people understand that we're here as a result of someone else. And our job is to open the door for the next, for that next generation. And so we saw this, we see this happening right here in uh, Santa Clara County. So that was the purpose for that chapter. It, it addresses those people in technology, groups and organizations that became um, very important and very uh, instrumental in making ways for other African-Americans. People in education that came and established uh, where became presidents of the universities or vice presidents of colleges or chancellors, people in, in entertainment, people in the arts. And so that chapter is really dedicated to 
the present uh, communi um, community leaders who help to open doors for others. Interesting and very enlightening. And thank you for sharing that. And again, for those of you who are just joining us on the live stream, my name is Juanita Dawson with AARP California Executive Council. And today we are here with special guest, Professor Jan Batiste Atkins, lecturer, educator, and author of African Americans of San Jose and Santa Clara County. For more information about African Americans of San Jose and Santa Clara County and where you can find Professor Atkins' book, please visit www.AfricanAmericanHistories.com. If you have any questions for Professor Atkins, please put them also in the comments. So, Professor Atkins, in addition to writing about African Americans of Santa Clara County, you've also conducted research on African Americans of San Francisco and Monterey County. When comparing the histories from these neighboring regions, are there any striking similarities or differences? Well, yes. <laughs> Major striking similarities. First of all, in all three of the communities, the Black church was established early on. And the Black church, it was the center part of the community and everything else grew from, from that point. The artist, artist became, was uh, the art, the um, involvement in the arts what is also similar in all of the communities. In, in right here in San Jose, um, and Mona Lewis, who is the on the left on the screen in front of you, she was an, a sculptress. And her art, which is, as you see next to her sitting on a chair, is a sculpture of Abraham Lincoln. And so this sculpture, she made this sculpture uh, back in the 1800s, in the latter part of the 1800s, about 1890s. And so she sculptured three pieces and she came to San Jose to show her art. And in San Jose, uh, the, the art was purchased by the Overton family, and then they dedicated the art to the San Jose uh, Library. Today, on the fifth floor, you can see the work of Edmona Lewis. But well, we had artists in every of the communities that I've researched, either they're in music, art, dance, performing the performing arts. These artists came out of the Black community or came to visit the Black community and made let and left their impact on the black community. We had musicians such as Ivy Anderson, and she's in the third picture sitting at the piano. Well, there she is sitting and behind her is Duke Ellington. And also um, Purcell, David Purcell from, um, from Gilroy. Now, Ivy Anderson is from Gilroy. She was a, became a wonderful musician. She went to high school. She went to elementary school and high school. And then she left, uh, she left San Jose, she left Gilroy. So she lived in Gilroy from about 1903 to about 1910, 19, a little bit longer, than, maybe in 1918. And then, but then she came back as an adult and she be, maintained her friendship with the, the students who, with her friends from Gilroy High School. But she became a world renowned singer with the Duke Ellington Band. We also had singers, entertainers from San Francisco and entertainers from Monterey. And so that was another uh, area. And then probably most important, I think, are those in philanthropy. And so the last photograph uh, on this screen, you will see a photograph of Sam McDonald. Well, there were philanthropists involved from every community. In San Francisco, we had Mary Ellen Pleasant, who was a rich businesswoman who came, who, who traveled and made sure that the, that the Underground Railroad line was available and open so the blacks could come into California for those traveling through the Underground Railroad. Uh, and then she dedicated, she used her money to fight, uh, to overcome discrimination. She sued the uh, transportation company, the railroad and transportation company in San Francisco to make sure the blacks could ride uh, on the on the, the train. Uh, this was in the 1800s, around 1860, 1865. Uh, she dedicated her money she used her money to help buy legal assistance for Archie Lee and others, who, who other fugitive slaves. In this case, we have in a contemporary time period, 
we have Sam McDonald. Sam McDonald worked there at Stanford uh, University uh, at the turn of the century and continued working until 1950. He acquired 400 acres of land. And so you would think he would take that land and cash the money and go travel around the world. No, he didn't. He dedicated his money to a convalescent home for kids. And also he bought land with that money. And I mean, he bought land and with, with the land, he also, he, he dedicated that land to Stanford with the, with the caveat that that land would be used for open space, for recreational use. And so San Mateo County purchased the land and San McDonald Park today exists in San Mateo County. And that was the land that San McDonald bought. And so he, he again, and with the convalescent home, the convalescent home for underprivileged kids became what is called the McDonald House. And so, and he dedicated his life to cooking for the kids, playing with the kids. And he would often uh, do handyman work around the house. And, and that was, that was his, his, the way he gave back to the community. We see this in Monterey County, people who dedicated their, their money, their, their time and their efforts to address a need in the county, people from the black community and people from the black community continue to do this kind of work today. So those are some of the similarities. There are very few differences. Uh, there are very few differences. In all of the communities, we see a sense at one time, the population grew to a certain level, but eventually many people of African heritage then left, left those, African Americans left those communities and moved on to other communities. So we see that in and out migration, which is another similarity. Um, and we see the contributions to the development of and the establishment of community. And that's a that's a, a similarity also. Yes, thank you so much, Professor Atkins. Black History Month reminds us that a strong sense of community is more important than ever. So given that social isolation is a serious issue for many during this health crisis, just because we're physically apart doesn't mean we have to be alone. So what are some ways you see African-American communities in California staying safe and connected to one another? Well, yes. So African-American people from African-American communities ex are experiencing the same as people from every community. And I think we need to stay connected through our churches, through our social organizations, through our, whether it's a uh, private clubs or, or whatever, and through our families. We do have technology, this is wonderful. We can stay connected and communicate through Zoom. But I think primarily we just, we, we cannot uh, feel sorry for ourselves that we're in this situation, but we need to reach out to others because there are people out there that don't have access to other people. And so we have to reach out, we have to stay connected with one another, we have to remember that we're not in this alone and that staying connected and reaching out to another person who, who, who may be someone you haven't heard of for a long time or, or maybe a family member. This was what communities did during those early years in, in San Jose and in Santa Clara County. There was a sense of family, sense of community, lots of family gatherings at picnics and parks and things like this. Well, we can still gather together and go on walks in small groups, take those walks through the neighborhood, knock on your neighbor, uh, neighbor's door and say, hey, come on out, let's go for a walk. You know, stay connected, that's the key, is to stay connected and 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 just know that, that um, stay connected, stay safe, and we'll get through this together. Great, well, thank you, it's just awesome. Thank you so much for your research and wisdom. And now we have uh, some time actually for a few questions from the viewers. Do we have any here? Yes. Okay, uh, here's one. Are there more chapters or topics that didn't make it to the final book, but you wish could have been included? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Is there are... more? There's another book out of you, right? Yeah, actually I'm gonna bring them all together and expand <laughs> to include Alameda County, so if we really want a true picture of the Bay Area, we have to look at those counties I excluded. And another thing is that with the black community, 
uh, black people don't tend to stay in one area. <laughs> we tend to move all over. <laughs> we have family members in Alameda, San Mateo, here and there. And so I want to bring the books together and explore some of those other communities too and call it <laughs> the Bay Area book. But um, so yeah, there were things I could not include. There's so much. And mm -hmm. I want to encourage mm -hmm. everyone, regardless of your ethnicity, religious group, organi club organization, document mm -hmm. your story. Document yes. your history. Because you know what? The community of Santa Clara County doesn't look like the community of the 1800s. That is gone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the community of tomorrow will not resemble what the community is today. So, yeah. but people still, we have the, the yearning and the desire to understand the past. We love history. We all love history. Watch those mm -hmm. documentaries on TV. <laughs> <laughs> we love oh, my God. And so yeah, documenting the past and, and that's, yeah, yeah, make sure it's, it's written down. Okay, okay, thank you. So here's another question. Let's see. Thank you for sharing about Black history in Santa Clara County. Do you know if many of the pioneer families following generations continue to live in the community? You know, I, every day I discover someone else who was really oh. a pioneer. Uh, someone told me about a family that I had, and I could not find information about this particular family. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, yeah, you know Susan so-and-so? I said, oh, is she from that family? I've been researching for so many years. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. wow. Yes, you'd be surprised. And in some cases, uh, it was an early, pine, an early minor from the 1850s. And I received a thank you card from one of his relatives. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, I didn't think he had any relatives left, at least with, used with the same last name. And I mm -hmm. found that for So I discover this all the time. There are families and there are generations, but it's, it's difficult uh, to trace yeah. some of them back. Yes. Well, you know, with this book, maybe they will really be able to find you. And I believe the website is www africanamericanhistories.com yes, yes yes so they'll be able to reach out to you to find you <laughs> yes that is exciting yes yes uh let's see was there one more question okay yes how does a non-historic historian like myself start documenting my family history just write it down just wow. begin to document it step by step and then collect photographs, collect um, birth certificates, mm. <laughs> evidence, um, emails, sometimes old letters. You know, mm. companies that love to publish old letters, you know, that are yeah. significant. Um, letters from a military person in World War One. if there's a collection of those letters, those are, those are valuable today. Mm -hmm. So just begin, you, you don't have to be an historian. And then just start, just start on your own. And then you, there's so many resources on the internet. You can go mm. to channels about how to document your family history. There's just, there's a lot of information, but I'll tell mm -hmm. you what I did was I started with my local librarians because oh. the librarians and archivists are there to help you. And they mm -hmm. were such a resource to me because I was able to find my photographs through History San Jose, through the local libraries, the local mm -hmm. historical societies. I know that Santa Clara County Library has a genealogy department right in the library and they have oh. on Saturdays and you can learn how to do this on your own. So the mm -hmm. reason I would, I think maybe before the internet, don't go to the internet, you might get false information. Go to the library. <laughs> <laughs> Go to your local library. And if there's a California room or a, his, or a his, historical room, start there. And those librarians are so knowledgeable and they will help you get started and will show you the steps you should take. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And here's a note. Thanks for reminding us about libraries and the local historical society. So thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, well, now I want to thank you, viewers, and thank you, Professor Atkins. Uh, that's all we have for live questions at this time. Uh, throughout Black History Month and beyond, AARP celebrates Black joy, its beauty, its brilliance, its variety, its tenacity, its resilience, its ability to thrive despite everything. So, Professor Atkins, what personally brings you joy? 
sharing local history. I love it. I love to talk to people about it. I love to share with students. I love to share with individuals. Um, many people sometimes will send an email and they'll just ask questions. And I, I so for me, especially during this time, I think that uh, having these projects <laughs> oh, yes. has given me and having to review my my some of my past writings and things from my in light of my future writings. It's given me um, it's given me a lot of joy in sharing, sharing, mm -hmm. staying connected with one another and just being available to other people. And that that brings me joy. Well, great. Thank you so oh, have, much. And my family. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. So thank you so much, Professor Atkins, and to our viewers. Uh, anyone who joined late, we had the wonderful opportunity of speaking with special guest, Professor Jan Batiste Atkins, lecturer, educator, and author of African Americans of San Jose and Santa Clara County, a book that documents the important stories of Black pioneers from the 1700s to today. This conversation is recorded, so if you missed anything, you can go back and watch it again. And to learn more about how AARP is celebrating Black History Month, visit aarp.org forward slash Black community. Professor Atkins, Thank you for joining us today. It has been a pleasure talking with you about African Americans in San Jose and Santa Clara County. And to our viewers, we hope you all have a wonderful day. And thank you for joining us for this Facebook and YouTube Live Black History Month conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much.